Welcome back fantasy players after the all-star race. This upcoming week we're back at Nashville. It'll be the inaugural race there. If you notice the new camera this week, yeah, I'm using my GoPro as opposed to my webcam. Nice thing now is this segment is now in 60 frames per second. That's all because my web camera is having a field day. Just doesn't feel like working anymore. So if you like this camera, I'm more than happy to have this camera moving forward. But before we look at the Nashville week, let's look back at the last points paying race at Sonoma. So let's just keep this short. Kyle Larson dominated this race as he picked up Ryrie left off the week prior at the Coca-Cola 600 by not only winning this race, but also the first two stages, collecting maximum points back to back weeks. But never mind the fact that Larson dominated this race. This race really picked up at lap 78. It all really kicked off with Corey LaJoy staying out in front of everybody and essentially getting ran over. He got spun after a late lunge into turn 11 by Ross Chastain, and then afterwards would result in a huge pileup, collecting the likes of William Byron, Alex Bowman, and Kevin Harvick. It's easily the biggest incident of the week. Fantasy players that included the 24, 48, or 4 can attest to that. We can also throw in a few more wrecks, like one at lap 87 with Ryan Priest and Cody Ware, and then during the restart after with Anthony Alfredo, Ryan Blaney, and Christopher Bell. And so let's look at our lineups here. Just like Charlotte, this race had a pretty high scoring week for fantasy, and that's assuming that you had Larson in your lineup. But if not, you could still get a lot of good points. In Jack of Wars 1, I may have had possibly the best results without Larson. But besides this cast of Elliott, Kyle Busch, Bowman, Truex, and Hamlin, Logano and Kurt Busch were also solid options with 31 plus points. So outside of using the Hamlin play, which was more of a want here than instead of a need after looking at his results from 2019, it's not really too much to complain about this roster, except I really thought Chase Elliott would have gotten Larson at the very end so he can give me race winner and top Chevrolet. After starting mid-pack, Truex really snuck in there and took Kyle Busch's honors of top Toyota. But as I said, not too much to complain here. An okay day, just setting up for next week. Now this is no doubt a track that would have been nice to have Chase Elliott. You know, 50 points is a lot compared to Chris Buescher's 21. And outside bonus picks, that's pretty much the big difference here. Kyle Busch could be clicking off some wins, but unfortunately he's got the whole fleet of Hendrick cars to pass. And unfortunately that's the second week in a row that he's had to finish behind multiple Hendrick cars. Gotta say, Joey Logano is quite the sneak pick for top forward. I honestly thought it would have been Harvick to get those honors, especially the week before at Charlotte, since he was outrunning all three of the Penske cars. And if not for Chris Buescher, he would have gotten it. But unfortunately, that late incident involving Corey LaJoy kind of snuffed that. And for most of my rosters here, Jaguars 1 and Jaguars World Network, I managed to garage Harvick well before that incident. In Pick Stenhouse, yeah, no Ricky Stenhouse after that incident that he had. Never on my radar for this week to begin with. But lo and behold, those starters, besides Larson, we nailed the starter picks here. All five drivers with more than 41 points. I just wish we could say the same about the bonus picks, because it seems I can only get one or the other, and never both here. As Pick Stanahouse's bonus picks, they go 0-6, and, and are quite far off of what I could have gotten. Logano proved to be the only Ford capable of winning in the last few laps, and the only one with the top five, with Blaney being the only other Ford in the top ten, where he finished tenth. It's pretty surprising that I garaged Denny Hamlin just because he had less stage points than the other five. Imagine if I had those starters for Jack of Wars 1. But unfortunately for that lineup, I barely left Logano out just because I wasn't 100% sold on the Penske drivers for Sonoma coming into the week. But knowing now, Logano has been very consistent on road courses this year. He has yet to finish outside the top five in those three starts at Daytona Road Course. Circuit of the Americas, and now Sonoma. So, definitely going to remember that for Road of America this 4th of July. No Chevy is finally the lineup that falters from a few late lap crashes. None from the Corey LaJoy crash, but from the couple that happened after that, such as Christopher Bell getting caught up with Anthony Alfredo in a spin, resulting in him finishing outside the top 20. And then there's Michael McDowell. Yeah, I gotta mention this part. So he is well inside the top 12, battling with the likes of Denny Hamlin and Alex Bowman for a top 10, but also with Daniel Suarez. So leading into the carousel, McDowell runs Suarez off the track resulting in Suarez losing a spot in a few seconds to McDowell. Bowman and Hamlin get past McDowell, with Bowman pushing McDowell off the track in the S's. And as a result, by turn 11, Daniel Suarez caught up to the back of McDowell and spun him out in retaliation. This all happening on the final lap, and that results in McDowell finishing 28th. Yeah, not the grandest of times. But does the bonus picks make up for that? Uh, kinda. 
We do get the Chevrolet and Hendrick Motorsports, but unfortunately, just like with Jaguars 1, we picked the wrong Hendrick driver to win, and for every pick that's not correct, we get a painful second place result there. Also close, but for the top manufacturer, their corresponding teammate finished in front of them with Larson, Logano, and Truex. You can copy and paste what I just said about Jaguars 1 for World Network. It's the same exact lineup here. Only real concern now is uses. For both Jaguars and World Network, both Denny Hamlin plays are at 3 left, which I'm content with. I'll probably use one of them, maybe two for Pocono, and then Garage Hamlin after that. Maybe get a 40 point day in his final play. Truex plays are running thin also. For World Network, I have three plays left. I mean, I'll need to reserve them for all the road courses, or sacrifice one to play him here. Elliott players are down to two. I may end up just starting them at Road America, Watkins Glen. And for your top five drivers that scored the most points from Sonoma, as I mentioned before, Kyle Larson swept the first two stages and took home the race win for the maximum 60 points. His teammate Chase Elliott finished behind him in second with a total of 50 points, 15 being stage points. Kyle Busch rounds out the top five finishers with him earning 44 points, 12 of them being stage points. And then Joey Logano and Alex Bowman both scoring 42 points each. Bowman rallied back in the top 10 with a ninth place finish after some crash damage, while also scoring 14 stage points. Logano finishes inside the top 5 with the 4th place finish with 9 stage points. Then behind those two is the pair of Kurt Busch and Martin Truex Jr. who would score 41 points each. Kurt finishes 6 with 10 stage points, with Truex finishing 3rd with 7. And so that was the Sonoma week. Moving ahead two weeks from now is the inaugural cup race at Nashville. We haven't been to Nashville since the Xfinity series ran there back in 2011. There will be practice and qualifying for this race. Because of this being a new track, of course, we don't have any historical data to rely on. But we can compare Nashville to similar racetracks. For one, Dover is a very similar track because it's concrete, just like Nashville. And if you really want some extra data besides Dover, then I suppose Darlington. Because it and Nashville, they're pretty old surface tracks. And, more importantly, Nashville is going to be running the 750 horsepower package. So for the driver info I'm going to be disclosing with you guys, we'll be taking a look at recent Dover and Darlington results. Also, here's my list of drivers. I think even with the new track, no surprise, I think you should build your lineup around Hendrick Motorsports, starting with Kyle Larson. That five car has been on a roll the last few weeks. And just like what I said with Charlotte, I think it's going to be very difficult to leave Larson out of your lineup. But among the top play drivers I want to mention this week, it's Joey Logano. I think for this week, he's going to serve as a very solid starter four, starter five driver for you. And that's just because of his numbers on 750 horsepower races this year. They're far better than the 550 results he's had this year. And let's also throw this in here. Most of the races in the upcoming weeks are going to be running 550 horsepower packages. That includes Pocono and Atlanta. So if you feel you're running behind on Logano plays, this week might be one where you can get a play in. At four uses remaining, I'm going to be playing him. If you choose not to play Logano this week, then maybe your next good play with Logano will come at New Hampshire. But most of Joey's best tracks left are probably going to be coming within five races to go. Those including some of the road courses left on the schedule, New Hampshire, and maybe Michigan. For blind spot plays this week, I don't have too many. I think for this week, you should go all out with your lineup and focus on getting in your big stud plays here. But if you do need to make a play save or a sneak play, then I believe you can get it with either a Ganassi or a Childress car. Among these four, I would go with the A car of Tyler Reddick, but we're going to give his teammate Austin Dillon the spotlight here. Now Reddick may outpoint Dillon in most weeks as of late, whereas Reddick is getting 30 points, Austin's only getting 25. There's some consistency to be had with Austin, and if after Saturday he provides the same practice results he had at Charlotte and shows good speed, then he could be a much better pick than we all think. But still, he can easily look past this play and center around Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, and most of Hendrick Motorsports. Plus, Atlanta's not too far from now, that being the site where Austin Dillon got one of his top 10 finishes at. That doesn't include Daytona, Talladega, Kansas, or Charlotte. Now, deep slipper picks. This is going to be rather interesting. Thought a little bit about the group that I had here, mainly Ricky Stenhouse Jr. For pick Stenhouse, I'm very much considering Stenhouse this week. But let's talk about Bubba Wallace, because when am I ever going to be talking about the 23 car outside of Super Speedway weeks? Now, the nice thing about Bubba, you really don't have to look too far back to be convinced about results with him. He finished 11th at Dover, and if you sample size the last three points paying race, he scored at least more than 20 points. But it's going to be very easy for a lot of drivers to outpoint Bubba. In a non-serious lineup like no Chevy, I'm looking for the 23 car to maybe save some plays 
Yeah, I could have easily went with Cole Custer instead of Bubba for this section, but I'm going with the fact that Bubba's earned a few more points than Cole in the last three points paying races, whereas Cole's earning points below 20, Wallace is earning above that. To sum up my thoughts about Bubba this week, I may have found a good place for him besides Daytona or Talladega, and let's roll with him, see what he gets us. My play with caution segment more stems from the fact of uses, well half the reason, the other reason is good but not great points results, and to be honest I think that's what you'll get with Martin Truex Jr. and Chase Elliott. Yeah, dare I say Chase Elliott shouldn't be in your lineup this week. But I feel if you have his three teammates there instead, I think he'll be just fine. And I'm not doubting the fact that Chase could have a good race at Nashville this week. If you have the uses, go for it. But unfortunately, I don't. And I'm tying all my uses to the remaining road courses on the schedule. Him and Truex. And here's arguably my least favorite section of this entire tier list, the avoids. Mainly because I have a hard time picking a good avoid driver. Because I can easily jinx myself. Or the avoid is just plain obvious. My avoid for this week, it's Christopher Bell. This is more because of his last four results. In Dover, Circuit of the Americas, Charlotte, and Sonoma, he hasn't finished inside the top 20. And besides his win at Daytona Road Course earlier this year, then it's been a pretty unremarkable rear for Christopher Bell, just like last year. If there's a place to have him break out of his slump, I'd go the following week at Pocono. If not there, then maybe Michigan. Even without those facts, I'd rather wait until Bell gets a good finish before I deploy another play with him. Perhaps Daytona at the very end of the regular season, you can get another play with Bell. New Hampshire could be a good sneak play, even though he didn't run very good there last year. I think he can maybe pull a 180 and get a surprise result there. So in short, I think this might be the worst place you can play Christopher Bell when you line it up with the rest of the regular season that we have remaining. And so even though we don't have the qualifying grid, not until Sunday morning, I can show you my lineups, albeit they could very much change before race day because we don't have qualifying or practice data yet as of my time recording this video. So here's what I got so far. Jack of Wars 1, I got three Hendrick cars. I got the Hendrick trio of Byron, Bowman, and Larson. At three uses left, I'm stashing Larson in the garage. If I end up using him, which I will, cool. If not, then that gets interesting. As with my plan with this lineup, I'm trying to find drivers that could very much have a chance at outpointing Larson. I'm coin flipping between either Tyler Reddick or Kevin Harvick, and depending on what we see with practice and qualifying between those two, that starter one spot could very much change. And then Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. They've had some history racing in Nashville in their early racing career, and I also look to them to be the top manufacturer correspondingly. Waste Elliott is looking very much the same, only difference is Harvick over Reddick. Even though if you have five lineups, you could probably have them all pick Hendrick and Kyle Larson to win in the bonus picks for each of them. But if you want a Ford pick from me, then Logano could probably win it. Harvick could be a close second, but give the edge to Logano with a little bit more momentum than Harvick. If I line up the remaining regular season schedule, then I better start picking tracks that Ricky Stenhouse Jr. for Pick Stenhouse is going to be running good at. It could very much be here. I'm hoping I can run out of place before Daytona, but that's also an option for Ricky. And then there's Atlanta next month. Worst case scenario, the starters with the Hendrick Trio, Kyle Busch, and Joey Logano don't score too many points over Stenhouse to where I have no choice but to leave Stenhouse in the garage. Not because he's running slow, but the rest of this lineup is running far faster than him. Outside of Larson, I do like the idea of Alex Bowman winning this race. It is the Ally 400, and that's Alex's sponsor. And he did win Dover, you know, the track that's very similar to Nashville. And if there's ever a point where I can predict Alex to win, then let's go Nashville. Let's see if that pit crew can do the same thing it did Dover and beat Larson out the pits during the money stop. So yeah, so far the lineups have been looking pretty samey. Three Hendrick drivers plus Kyle Busch and Joey Logano. But for no Chevy, this is where things get interesting. I feel Danny Hamlin and Ryan Blaney could be solid starter five options if you're looking for somebody to pair Kyle Busch, Alex Bowman, William Byron, and Kyle Larson with instead of, say, Tyler Reddick or Kevin Harvick. So we'll give no Chevy, both of them, along with Harvick, Kyle Busch, and Joey Logano, of course. I'm sticking with everything I said in the Deep Sleeper pick section of this video with Bubba Wallace. He's going to be in my garage for no Chevy. The starters is looking awfully stacked, a little too stacked, actually. Everyone in the starters here is running on four uses remaining. If I have any hopes of saving uses, then maybe Bubba could go in there and save one. Just needs to outrun one of them, and he can very much do that. If Toyota wins this week, I think it's with Kyle Busch. The 18 car has been running very good on track that include practice and qualifying, and that alone makes me not want to skip out on the 18 car this week. Jaguars World Network, yeah we'll roll with the same lineup as Jaguars 1, just like with Sonoma. Oh wait, the only difference here? 
top Toyota instead of Kyle Busch, we're going to put Denny Hamlin in. Just from the fact that even though Hamlin has been outside the radar these last few weeks, I think he can get back into the conversation of championship contenders eventually, sometime before the end of this regular season, and he could maybe do that at Nashville. He likes Dover, maybe he'll like this track too, but I only have three uses with him, so I'll just shoot him in for the top Toyota and have World Network continue to shove out Kyle Busch plays, which they're far behind on. For this lineup, the Rowdy uses are at the same level as, say, Reddick and Keselowski at being at six remaining. And so those are my picks. As I said before, they can very much change before practice and qualifying. Also, a flash on screen briefly, the playoff cut line. Now compared to Sonoma and next week at Pocono, you might not have to focus on the bubble drivers too much. And if you do take this into consideration, just look at the Childress cars, Kurt Busch and Ricky Stenhouse as drivers that if there's a timely caution before the end of the stage, could hunt for stage points. I may not be able to post another video like this before race day to give you my updates on picks, which is why you should follow me on Twitter at Jaguars to stay up to date with any changes I make to my lineup. And or if you want to ask me questions about fantasy this week, Cup Series practice at Nashville is on Saturday at 11.05 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Qualifying is Sunday morning at 8.05 a.m. Pacific, with the race kicking off a little over four hours later at 12 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. This is also the first week where NBC takes over for the remaining of the season. All coverages are on NBCSN. Seven days from now, we'll get ready for the Pocono Doubleheader Week. And until next time, I'll catch you later.